All right. Uh, so we have seen how to construct new topological spaces using the subspace construction. So now we are going to to do quotient space. So quotient space is actually the hardest of the the, the one that is hardest to understand. So please um, don't be disappointed if you don't get it in the first attempt. We are going to do some exercises. Hopefully you will get it eventually. I will, I will try to do my best to, to explain. So uh, the motivation here is is a plain model for a surface. So recall that um, if we have a surface, I don't know, something like a torus, so we uh, glue two pairs of opposite points, right? So it means that, um, I don't know, so th this is a square, so if, if you think of this as a square, so th th these glue instructions mean that we should do this, right? So we should basically glue two pairs of opposite uh, opposite um, edges, and then we glue this um, edge to this. So then, thereby making a torus. Now, um, so quotient space is the rigorous mathematical basis for the deconstruction, right? So is is a um, is a way to um, to define it abstractly, so we can work with it, so we can prove theorems about it. All right, so the um, the analogy here that I I would like to use is construction of uh, remainders module M from from the integers. So, for example, right. So, how do you construct remainders module three? Right. So Z three. Now we begin with with all integers, and we'll look at uh, possible remainders module three. So. Uh, there exist integers um, that are divisible by three. So zero, three, six, and so on, minus three, and so on, right? So then uh, we can have integers um, that give you remainder one when divided by three. So one, four, seven, and so on, negative two. And uh, there exist integers, say, uh, with remainder negative one, so negative one, two, five, and so on, and so on. Now, uh, so there are three classes of integers, and each of them is just um, like it forms an element. Each of these classes as a whole is an element of this set Z3. So um, each of these classes is an element of Z3, so which means that Z3 just has three uh, three elements. Well, um, now, how did we do it in, I don't know which course you, um, um, probably foundations of mathematics with equivalence relations, or probably it was in, mm, groups and symmetries, because that is a group, and this is how we construct the quotient group. But in any case, what we have here is we have an equivalence relation, right? So uh, there is an equivalence relation on, on Z, and uh, it tells us that two numbers, say A and B, are equivalent, if and only if A minus B is divisible by three. So, and then uh, Z3 is the set of equivalence classes with respect to this equivalence relation. Well, and then um, in uh, in algebra, they introduce a group structure on the set of, of, of equivalence classes, and this uh, gives us the construction of a quotient group. So same thing here in topology. What we do is we begin with an equivalence relation on a set, and then we uh, look at a set of equivalence classes. Right? Um, and then uh, let us let p be the function that sends every element to its own equivalence class, right? In, in the previous example, let's say if um, representatives of our equivalence classes that, that we choose to represent, like 0, 1, and negative 1, right? So the, this function would send 6 to 0, uh, 7 to, to negative 1, and say 5 to, to, to ne negative 1. So something like this. So th this is p. Um, so, what is the main property of this 
function P. So the main property, if you think about it, is that P is a su subjection, right? So P is onto. Well, but from on the other point of view, if instead of beginning with an equivalence relation, you begin with um, a surjection from X to Q, then you can introduce an equivalence relation on X. So you can say that um, X1 is equivalent to X2 whenever uh, P of X1 equals P of X2. And then you, you can get an equivalence relation, right? So from this point of view, an equivalence relation is essentially the same thing as a surjection to, to some other set, right? So now in topology, so we begin with a set X uh, that has a topology, right? So uh, there is, so X is a topological space. Now, then we either have an equivalence relation and then Q is the set of equivalence classes. And then we have a function P that sends every element in X to its own equivalence class in Q. Or we can just begin with a subjection P from X to Q. And then, but in any case, we define a topology on Q, right? So in other words, um, if we have a subset in Q, then we want to specify, to define which subsets in Q are called open and which are not open. And the rule here is that uh, subset of U of Q is going to be open whenever the inverse image, P inverse of U, is open in X. The, the reason it works because uh, P inverse of U is actually a subset of X, and in X we already have a topology, right? So we know which subsets of X are open. Um, this seems to be a bit strange at first glance because the question that students always ask, so why do we take the inverse image? So why can't we just, I don't know, begin with X, then there are some open sets in X. So let's say V is going to be an open set in X. And then we just say that P of V, which is a subset in uh, Q, then we just say that this is going to be open. It doesn't work this way uh, because of the following. So let, let me show you how this works on a simple example, right? So circle. Uh, so I'm going to begin with a line segment, closed segment, right? So this, this is going to be closed line segment. So the dots on both ends are going to be solid. So representing that it's closed, right? so closed, closed line segment. Right? So from zero to one. Uh, and then we are going to basically glue its endpoints together. So the equivalence relation that we are going to introduce is that zero is equivalent to one, right? So uh, it means that uh, we're going to have the following equivalence classes. So all points X that are pre sharply between zero and one, they're going to have its own equivalence class consisting of just one element, right? So one element equivalence class. But um, besides that, that, there's going to be an equivalence class that has two, um, two elements, zero and one. So zero and one, they represent the same point on the uh, quotient space. But of course, if zero and one represent the same point, it means that you know the left end point of the interval and the right end point, end point of the interval on our space, they become the same thing, so they're glued. So th this is why th this construction uh, is, is actually a rigorous um, uh, definition of gluing, right? So, but now what if we um, uh, wanted to define, what if we considered P of some V where V is open um, in, um, in the closed interval? And we just saw that uh, in the closed interval, in the um, subspace topology, so open sets look like this. So it could be the intersection of some uh, interval from a real line with our closed interval. So an open set could be something like this. It could be um, an interval from say, I don't know, say 0 0.7 to, to one, not including 0 0.7, but including one. 
Uh, so this is from zero point, sorry, zero. Zero point seven two to one. Mm, in sorry, including one. So this is an open set in our uh, uh, line segment, right? So my uh, so here my x is the line segment zero one, and my my q is well. Hypothetically, it should be the, the circle as well, right? Uh, so this is my open set. But what is p of this uh, zero point seven to one? And p of this is actually, you know, if if you, if you think about it, is going to be the interval that on, on the circle that looks like this, right? So this is the like a circled interval but with one of the endpoints included and the other one not included right so which means that it is not consistent with our intuition so it should not be called an open set on the circle because an open set on the, on the circle should be like uh like an open interval but it's kind of curved so and this is just inconsistent so and this happened because we tried to to call um, the image of an open set and an open interval so and it doesn't work, right? So which is why, in the definition of a topological of the discussion topology, they use pre-image, p inverse of u, rather than the image. And so which is um, basically it explains. Um, now maybe let me uh, give you another example related to this. Um, um, circles and. Uh, circles and uh, and line segments. So um, I've just explained how a circle is a quotient space of a line segment, but circle is also a quotient space of a whole real line, right? So if you think of the whole real line, this is going to be our x. Well, and consider the following um, the following equivalence relation, right? So x is equivalent to y whenever uh, x minus x minus y is an integer. So I'm claiming that uh, the quotient space with respect to this equivalence relation is, is also a circle, right? So the, the new quotient space. So why is that so? Because, um, you know, if, we, if you think of any equivalence class with respect to this, this, this relation, like, I don't know, say 0 0.7, 1.7, uh, 2.7, and so on. And on the other hand, minus 0 0.3 and so on. So th this would be an equivalence class. We can always choose a representative of this equivalence class that is between 0 and 1, right? So x that belongs to the interval from 0 to 1. Therefore, we identify um, the set of equivalence classes with just the interval from 0 to 1. But one of these equivalence classes, namely the one that consists of uh, all integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, negative 1, and so on. So this equivalence class, um, between 0 and 1, we cannot really choose which of them represents it, right? So which is why we can just, I don't know, we're going to say that both 0 and 1 are going to represent the, this equivalence class, and they're going to be glued to each other. And this is exactly the same construction as uh, as the construction of the circle uh, made out of um, as a quotient space of a line segment, right? So th this is why we, we can make a circle uh, out of uh, either out of a line segment by just gluing its endpoints, or by from whole straight line. And from a whole straight line, you can think of it as uh, it kind of wraps around the circle infinitely many times, and that, that's how we make our circle. Okay, um, so the next is how we can glue a sphere from its plane model, right? So here is the um, example, but essentially what we have here is our um, our plane model, right? So which is a disk with some gluings on the boundary, right? So this means the following thing. So this means that um, all points of this disk, except for those that are labeled A, 
um, are going to just represent, so the equivalence class is going to just have one point. Like if you take any point here, so its equivalence class consists of just one point. Any point here, its equivalent, its equivalence class consists of just one point. And this includes the like the north and the south pole. So the, 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 these two points, they all also have the, the, this property. Their equivalence class contains just just, um, just just one point. But say these two points that are opposite, they're glued together. So which means that the the equivalence class consists of two points. And let's say I don't know. Maybe these two points, this one and this one, they're also glued together. So their equivalence class consists of two points. And then if you think of uh, of the topology on this space, then what an open set looks like, right? So, and then uh, an open set could look like, I don't know, something like half an open disk here on this side. But since this uh, interval, this boundary of the, this open disk is, is glued to, to to the opposite side, so then it means that uh, the uh, whole, the, the whole kind of disk on the, the surface is, is is glued out of two halves of two open two two halves of open disks, and which is why uh, it is still consistent with our um, our intuition of what a disk on the surface should look like. And so this is how we can make a sphere. And basically, for a torus, is essentially the same thing. So um, when we glue a torus out of um, uh, out of a square, so what we have is uh, we construct an equivalent relation. So every point inside the square, like this point, or this point, or this point, or this point. So anything inside of the square. Um, it is not equivalent to anything else, right? So its equivalence class consists of just one point, right? So uh, then if you look at the boundary of um, our square, so then according to gluing, say, let's say th th this point is, is, is to be glued to this point. So opposite points on opposite edges should be glued to, to each other, right? So um, the equivalence classes consist of two elements, right? But then if you look at the um, vertices, then all the four vertices of the, the square, so they are glued to each other, so which is why the equivalence class of each vertex consists of all the four of them, so they, it, it has four elements. But, but, but then, basically, if you, um, if you think of, a, um, of an open neighborhood, then an open neighborhood could be something like this, so like made out of two disks glued together, it could be something like this, so just a single disk inside, or it could be made like out of four quarters of a disk if it is the if it is an open neighborhood of the, the vertex. So this is how it works. This is how the portion space construction works.